am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going for some abstract color inspiration and I'm going to be dyeing two different colorways inspired by fierce and clumsy. I have a little idea about how to dye these two colorways actually using the same color palette that I think is going to be a little fun. Well, I hope it's gonna be fun. I hope you're gonna like it. So please make sure you're subscribed, uh, give the video a thumbs up, and do all the youtube -y things. I already had an idea for the technique I wanted to do today, but I was a little unsure about what colors. And so I googled what color is fierce, and fierce is actually the name of like a pinky red in the Pantone color sphere. So I knew I wanted to incorporate red, and then, I thought that it would be fun to pick black for some nice fierce contrast and then a turquoisey blue. So this is the general palette that I want to play with today. And so while the color I'm picking for our red isn't going to match what Pantone thinks is the color, I think we're going to play with one of the fiercest reds I know, a fluorescent red. That is an unreleased color, which is why I'm not giving the name or the brand of it yet. Um, maybe by the time this video is public, the color will be released. Uh, but so we're going to use that along with uh, Dharma True Black and uh, Caribbean Blue. Now I already have a stock solution of Caribbean Blue ready to go, so let's go mix up our black and red. I put on my deluxe rubber respirator mask with P100 filters, safety glasses, and gloves to start measuring out dye powders. For Dharma's True Black, I knew I wanted uh, a really concentrated dye mixture. Since we're going to be hand painting yarn, I want to be able to add a lot of punch without a lot of volume. So I measured out six grams of the True Black acid dye and then dissolved it in approximately 300 milliliters of hot tap water. I may add a little bit more as needed. I'm not worrying about getting the perfect concentration. I have a feeling I'll end up using up most of this black dye as we're going to be dyeing a total of 600 to 700 grams of yarn today, but there may be some left over and it's okay if it's not a perfect stock solution with a perfect concentration that I know. I have an approximate idea of where it is and I've been dyeing my feel a lot lately. As for our fluorescent red color, I haven't looked at the depth of shade of it, but in general from other fluorescent pigments I know I have a sense of where it might want to be. So I measured out two grams of this color, dissolved it in, again, not precisely, but approximately 200 milliliters of tap water. I have a feeling I'm going to end up diluting this one. And I also have a feeling I'm going to dilute that 1% stock of Caribbean blue that I also am bringing in today. For our blue, I added some water to this cup. And I'm going to add, I think, approximately this. Yeah, no, not anywhere near the same amount. But I'm going to add a lot of the 1% stock of Caribbean blue. Uh, we'll add more water to this as needed once we make our colors. For the fierce colorway, we're going to start off adding color to our yarn on the countertop. And so I took some plastic wrap and spread it out so that way once we've added all the color we can roll it up to steam set in a steamer basket. Now I'm going to bring over the yarn. Right here I have 300 grams of Knit Pick Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn and I pre-soaked it for, I guess it's been about 20 minutes or so. And I'm going to bring it over and try to spread it out as much as I can. Now I have not added any acid to this yarn or to our dyes yet. I want to try, and I say this <laughs> hesitantly, but I want to try to start adding these colors on with no acid so that way I can work it through a little bit to create fierceness and then, uh, and then we'll come through and add acid maybe as we go. We will see. And I know that if I wanted the lines that we're going to be creating today to be extra fierce and sharp and to have no like blending between these colors on the yarn, then it would have helped to mix them with guar gum or something. So that way, as I added the dye here, even using a brush, so we're not introducing a lot of liquid. Oh, and you can see I, <laughs> no, I'm not supposed to be clumsy yet. <laughs> uh, but as I added the color, 
uh, you can see that it is sort of wicking out, spreading out a little bit. And so if I had wanted the color to really just stay more, having a thickener in with the dye would really, really help. Now I'm feeling a little bit risky right now because I've got this dye so close to the edge, but I am attempting to avoid uh, the drip that I had earlier. So maybe I'll hold it, but then I can't release the yarn as much. You can see it sticks to the brush a little bit and I'm not pressing nearly as hard, but I really, really do not <laughs> want to spill this. Uh, not at all. It's been a while since I've used foam brushes to just hand paint a colorway on yarn. This tends to not be the technique that I do the most often when I'm doing variegated colorways, and that is because I'm clumsy. <laughs> and so this is not like supposed to be, oh no, the brush came off. Wow. Uh, this is not my clumsy colorway, but I am a very clumsy person. So we're going to have to do something else, but let's see if I can finish this black section. In theory, I probably should have done the black last because it is the deepest color, but I wanted to start here and then figure out where to go from there. Now, of the types of colorways I dye, this is the one that is the most likely at this stage, <laughs> at this stage, not forever, to be something that you could do pooling with. Um, be just because the yarn is gonna have a more regular repeating element to it than a lot of the things I often dye. Uh, and I'm just adding more pigment. I know we're gonna need to add color to the other side, but I'm gonna wait until we've done most of the colors. Uh, but this brush is actually working pretty well for me right now, and it means my my hands aren't getting that dirty. I do have yarn over um, an extra skein, a seventh skein of yarn soaking that could be a yarn mop. But let's peek. Oh, that's not bad. The color is going through pretty well. Let me go find, I'm sure I have other brushes because I'm liking the way the brushes are doing this for me. All right, I do have other brushes, just none that are quite as thick as what I was using on the black. That feels very intense still. I'm gonna add more water to this. Oh dear, and I have a very, very full glass. I mean, that didn't make it a lot lighter, but that's okay. I know that there is a bit less pigment so hopefully we will not end up with a mega, mega bleeder here. Now I'm not, I think I may do black again over where I want the colors to blend. So I'm not gonna go all the way to the black right now, but I'm going to keep on applying the dye here. And I did realize one negative with what I'm doing right now, and that is I don't have the ratios, so I can't mix more that are exactly the same. So I'm gonna do my best to get as much coverage on here as I can. One reason why I don't think I do this kind of application as much anymore is it takes a lot longer. It takes longer to do this than using some kind of squirt bottle or something like that. But it does give me a little bit, or a lot more control over where I'm putting the colors. Even if they may not be the most solid, uh, I think that it does help a lot overall. And now let's check our red color and see, ooh, that's good. That is beautiful. I have no idea if this is too intense. Uh, hopefully we will not use anywhere close to the volume that we use with the blue here for this fluorescent red. Uh, because if we do, then I'm going to worry that it is too much color. But this time I'm going to start close to where our black is and I'm trying to not be too clumsy yet. And you can see that there may be some marks on here from where I add the color and there might be some tonal variation in these sections. That's something that just happens uh, with this type 
of technique overall. But the reason why I like using the brush is that it allows us to add the dye without adding too much liquid in any one spot. Uh, and so I like that because the yarn usually doesn't end up dripping uh, when we are done with it. But I'm gonna keep going with our red. I again have not peeked to see how much penetration of color we're getting. I will want to look at that and get a feel of that before. I think we'll add some acid on this side before we flip things over. At least that's what my gut is telling me. But let's peek and see what's happening. Okay, let's look. I still have some of the red, but I have a feeling we did not get the level of penetration over here because we added a lot less liquid on. Uh, so I may end up needing to mix up some more of that. But I also want to point out, see where I stopped adding the black? And watch it spread. <laughs> See, you can see that line, um, which is very amusing to me. The blues, okay. I feel like the blues, it's damper than our reds, but we got more penetration. I wonder what will happen. So I'm quite sort of cupping this in as I squeeze. You can see blue dye come out. This is sort of a little attempt to uh, disperse this color through the area a little bit more. And I think it's working a little bit. I don't want to squeeze too hard or too far, but it is making the color a little bit more even than it was. Just a little bit. We definitely will need to add more color to that side. And now let's try the same thing with our red. See if we can help work it through. Because to some extent, this is something that we can work on with that paintbrush. Um, but, oh, that's helping so much to spread it out and, and really putting it over. Because we can try squishing it very locally as well. Oh, that's working really well, but I think kind of grouping it and squeezing it, trying to keep the color towards this end versus bringing it over into the black. That is working so well. And if we had already had a lot of acid in here, it would not have worked that well. Okay, so given how well this is working, I think that I'm gonna flip the yarn before we add acid. Because once we add acid, we can do this same kind of thing to try to work it through a little bit more. But if we add acid now, whatever color we add will be patchier still on those segments. And we can always flip and spot correct more after we add the colors as well. I, again, I could have brought over a yarn mop, but we're just, we're going for it. <laughs> Wiping up with the paper towel. And, you know, I, I debated this. So the color, again, I don't think we're gonna have a harsh line between the colors and this may spread through into the red and we may end up with softness of those transitions. And I just have to be okay with that. Okay, how am I gonna do this? Oh, there we go. That wasn't so bad. And the goal here is to try to, as much as possible, reveal the segments of yarn that need more color, but without, like, accidentally blending the colors too much right now. And you know, this is certainly a candidate for some kind of cold process technique um, where we could set this up, roll it up, and let it sit for a while before steam setting. But let's carry on uh, and apply color to this second side. Because again, there's no acid in here, I'm not worried about what we add here not um, 
matching as well. So I did just take a little bit more of that Caribbean blue dye and added it to some water. So that way I could try to get, finish the coverage on that side. And then with the black and the red, I mostly was just spot checking, trying to cover up the regions that I thought needed a little more color. However, I am leaving where the colors overlap and waiting until I have acid before I add more black there, just so that way the colors won't spread as much when we hit those areas. And now I want to start adding acid. So I put some white vinegar in a spray bottle. And I am spraying it onto the yarn. Trying to get reasonable coverage here. All right, I think that is reasonable at least for the first side. And you could see when I was scrunching the colors a little bit that there was enough acid present that the, there was a lot of liquid in there. So I think that if at this stage I come and squeeze here like with the red, this is gonna start distributing that acid through the yarn a little bit without me needing to, to flip it yet. I will add more acid just for now, I'm using this to, again, attempt to work these colors through. I'm a little worried I've used way too much of the red and way too much of the blue. The blue coverage is not as even as the red, but I still feel like we have pretty even coverage overall. And ooh, that's a great sign. Now, as I start squirting, well, there was color there, but some of it started to look a little bit clearer. And so maybe that's a sign that there's a lot more liquid, but maybe that's also a sign that some of this color is starting to strike, which is what we want. Because there, there's a lot of blue. But once I soak that back in, if I go and I squirt again, the color ugh, is looking way less pigmented, way less blue. Uh, so the red, I have a feeling, will need more acid. It is a, flu it's a fluorescent pigment. And the black, oh dear, as I am spreading it now while moving it, um, the black is very, very pigmented. <laughs> and you can see that the edges, while I think it'll still, the colorway is still gonna be fierce no matter what, the edges are less even than they were before. And I'm coming in now to try to make sure that we don't have any white left there. And I'm even going to, if I can do this gently, try to just flip these sections, and okay, that's looking pretty good. I do see a little clumsy spot up there. We're not supposed to be clumsy yet, but I suppose you can be fierce and a little clumsy. <laughs> that can happen, but it looks like even with the tendrils of the color spreading out, specifically into the red, it does look like uh, we've got really good coverage overall. I'm gonna add more acid. Focusing mostly on the black right now, but also bringing more down onto the red, and why not the blue? Even though I didn't flip those over all the way. And so I'm gonna go ahead and squish the acid through a little bit more again, like I've just shown. But first I'm just wiping up a little bit of that color. And while I squish the yarn, I wanna take this opportunity to give a huge shout out thank you to, to Don Jans, Jessica Parco, Kara Siegel, Tamara Svanez, and the rest of the Fiverr patrons whose names you see on the screen right now. 
Patreon is a wonderful platform that allows viewers to support content creators like me and in exchange they can get some fun perks like shoutouts in the latest episode of Die Pop PS plus early access and there's lots of other perks. You can learn more at patreon.com slash chemnitz. I don't know if you noticed but when I'm squishing the fluorescent red I'm now seeing a uh, neon pink color popping up. So something Whatever is making the color a little more red, I believe, is striking. So that is good. And up, oh, yep, I have a few uh, clumsy little black dots in there from when I was squishing that black. Uh, <laughs> but the black definitely has a ton of pigment in there. The black section is actually a lot bigger than I originally intended, uh, probably because of the way it spread and me chasing it. I think I started really thin, and it just grew and grew. So. I'm in retrospect, I'm glad I kept it small to begin with, um, even though the original plan was to keep it even smaller. But anyway, I am going to leave this here on the counter at room temperature for 15 minutes before we go and steam set it. And I'm going to do that so that way some of the black pigments will start to strike and so then when we roll it up into the jelly roll we're likely to get less of a pool and spread. I don't know if this step is absolutely necessary, but my gut is telling me to do this today. I don't know how much this waiting did, but all right, I'm still seeing hot pink there and still a lot of black. Uh, that is not surprising, <laughs> but I was just curious. Okay, and so now I want to, I guess, push things together a little bit. That'll give us a little bit more space as we create our jelly roll. So I'm going to fold these insides in. And then starting with the blue end, because this is where I don't have the zip ties, and actually, really quickly, adding a little color there, which I can squish through before we start rolling. <laughs> I'm going to start rolling this up. And what this is going to do is mostly, uh, sometimes these leak, but it should help prevent the colors from running into each other. Now let's go over to the steamer basket really quickly. Actually, I'm going to move the yarn before I even go over there. Uh, so that way we don't leak, hopefully. Hopefully. The jelly roll is in the basket. And now I'm going to steam set it for, I'm going to do 45 minutes. Normally I would do 30. I feel like I want to do a little more. <laughs> that also because it's rolled up and it's pretty dense, it'll give more time for the heat to get towards the center. So we'll be back. Okay, our 45 minutes are up. Things are nice and steamy. I'm going to turn off the heat and then I'm going to just leave the yarn here in the steamer basket for a little while uh, to cool off slowly. I think more heat won't hurt anything. And I know with bright pinks that we saw in that red, sometimes that needs to just cool off slowly for those colors to absorb. So we'll allow that to happen. Now it's time to get a little clumsy. We have 300 grams of yarn in here in 16 cups of water. We're in a catering steam pan and I'm just pouring on some vinegar to this. Not gonna work it through, and it doesn't really matter very much, does it? But that's that's how we're gonna start there. And hmm, I think we'll start cold. But we're gonna come in and oh no, I just poured it. I mean, that's not actually an oh no. I meant to do it a little bit like random, like it doesn't have to be perfect. You know, it's not all in one spot. It's clumsy. <laughs> so I used up most of that liquid. I have a little bit more here um, from rinsing out the brush and I'm gonna sort of hold on to that. We'll use that probably for the other side, but we're gonna come up, oh, I spilled. <laughs> and you know, we're gonna kind of do this sloppily, having bits of the color just splash all over. <laughs> this is actually really fun. In general, I am quite a clumsy person. Um, I 
like fall all the time. I oh, I trip over things, and I literally just tripped over the vinegar off camera <laughs> as I was saying that. But oh, before we bring in any black, um, I took just the spoon and my um, paintbrush out, uh, and I'm soaking that because I'm wondering. Well, we may as well. Oh no. I think I might try to do more like drips from this. Bring the spoon back. Because, oh, I wanted, you know, I want to make sure that there's some color that kind of goes across. <laughs> this is really fun. Um, and so I'm just adding it with no, almost no control. Now, there's enough water in here that these colors are going to spread out. Eventually, we will move them, but th since things are cold, we're able to get something kind of fun. And there we go. I wanted some color over on that side, so I'm kind of throwing it down. Uh, I did go a little bit beyond <laughs> my work surface. Uh, <laughs> so, okay, let me just clean this up. A few drops escaped the pan a little bit, but we're... We're pretty good. <laughs> oh man. And I'm gonna start heating this. So I have a lot more color left. I've got more of that black that we mixed. And oh yeah, I guess I never said that I didn't quite have six grams of dye. I had a little bit less, but since it was finishing up the dye in a container, I just sort of rolled with it. I do have another container of True Black, but um, I figured that we'd wait for another time. But now, I'm gonna start heating this up. I love this, this is a work of art. I wish this was a canvas or fabric or something that it would like, stay. <laughs> um, but what I'm gonna do is just let it be. Uh, and I guess I'll come back in about 15 minutes. But, but I do have some more diluted colors that we can eventually add in here. Um, so we can try to make sure we have some coverage. I don't think the blue we have would be anything that intense. It would give us some more lighter blues, depending on how far things spread. But we have so much black that we may end up going heavier with that, uh, but we also may not. I like doing this kind of thing and then seeing what the colors do. We might, once we see how the colors strike, we might decide it's done and go from there. So I'll see you in about 15 minutes. I'm clumsy. This is clumsy, so I'm not even going to check to see if all the color is absorbed. We're just going to flip. Um, a lot of it has absorbed. Oh, but I did want to point out here, ooh, good, we got great spread. There's some breaking here in this fluorescent red color. I definitely see orange and pink and red. Ooh, ooh. We do know from color mixing that if you add yellow to pink, you get a red. So maybe that's how this came about. All right, but let's continue to flip. I'm seeing uh, a fair amount of pink left, but overall, that is the main color I feel remaining in here. And so now, I mean, this is a little bit less um, perfect. I, or it feels a little bit less clumsy, sloppy. Um, just because of the way, oh, I'm in this down here. Um, just because of the way that the colors are more dilute when we're adding them, so I don't feel the uh, drips and the mess and the clumsy application nearly as much as, oh dear, and I forgot that that guy was falling off. <laughs> But now we have some more of our concentrated black and okay, I'm trying to not make too much of a mess as I once again sloppily add it just in a very uh, paint splattery kind of way. And I think I'm going to leave it there. We still have more black dye, but we're going to let these colors spread and things are going to be a little bit different this time, mainly because things are already hot. And so the colors aren't going to necessarily spread as far as they did that last time. But I'm going to, I guess, heat this for 
goodness, I think just 30 minutes. We'll go ahead and heat it for 30 minutes from here. But should we add more acid? Yeah. Why not? There we go. <laughs> A big glug of vinegar. Now, I could have tried to pick colors that evoked clumsy, but today I'm leaning into the technique for this. And so I really hope you're enjoying this. I'm having a blast. <laughs> this is super, super fun. And the 30 minutes are now up. I'm just curious how much pigment is left. And not much, maybe the tiniest hints of some pinks. Um, so that is good. Uh, I'm gonna remove this from the pan to cool in a little while, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it in here. Uh, and once the yarn is completely cool, then we can wash it. And as for this last bit of black dye, I'm gonna add it into a mason jar. And we're already at less we're probably at a, maybe close to a 1.75% depth of shade. I'm gonna add a little bit of water in here. Actually coming in with some of that black runoff water. There will be some dye left behind, but that is kind of what is gonna happen. Okay, but I'm trying to get a little bit more of that out. So I'm gonna call this approximately a 1.5% stock solution but I may not label it and so I might forget. <laughs> it's a while later and all I can say is that the yarn feels wet. Uh, there's a lot of liquid in here. I'm seeing some pinks in that water. Ooh, it's still quite warm, but the black seems to have mostly set. Sometimes as I move things, there could still be some pigment on, um, the plastic rack themselves, so seeing color now isn't necessarily indicative of spread, but there is a, oh, we did get some spread. Too bad, we got some spread in there and in here just because there's enough liquid that the color squished and moved a little bit. Um, but you know, that happens, I think the color is still fierce. Uh, it's just, you know, there was a little bit of spread. So I think guar gum, uh, potentially would have helped. And again, I think if we had some place where we could have laid this out versus rolling it in a jelly roll, it might have helped to let it sit f at room temperature um, for longer to prevent this kind of just the color spreading. And then if the red was a little on the bottom and the black on the side, some of that color dripped down. And that is what it is. But um, I need to let this cool off more <laughs> so we can wash it. You can see that it is mega, mega steamy. In a couple minutes, I'll probably go take it and squeeze out some of this water, uh, which will help it then cool off faster. Let's wash clumsy while we wait. <laughs> while we wait for uh, fierce to cool. And you know what? Fierce has some clumsiness to it. I think that that is fine. I would have loved to do like sharp lines, but I'm not obsessing over it. I really don't want a bleeder. The other one, when I squeezed it out, I saw some black come out and I was like, oh no. But this one has so much less pigment overall that I'm not anticipating any bleeding. I'm gonna add some dish soap and fill this up. Okay, let's see. Yeah, I'm not seeing any bleeding. Um, good. I'm glad we washed this one first because if the other one's gonna be a challenge, then uh, we'll see that there. But I'm going to finish rinsing out the soap and I'll put this through my spin dryer and we'll wash the rest of our yarn. Look at how bright these colors are. All right, we're gonna go in to wash it. And I'm gonna cross my fingers. Yep, you can see some spots where that black spread. Uh, if there was too much water in there with the black being in the middle, I should have really made sure it was all the way on the bottom. It did not spread onto the blue, um, so that stopped it, but a little bit of the black, probably because it just gravity. Gravity. Oh, am I seeing a little color 
I don't know. There was some black that came out when I squeezed it out. I'm seeing maybe a hint of some red. But honestly, this is so pigmented. Like, the black yarn. We'll see how it feels when it dries. It feels black. It feels super dark. Um, so I'm going to add dish soap and fill this up. Uh, I love how bright these colors are. Um, it really, really makes me happy. Even if I would have been happier if there hadn't been an um, oopsie. We're getting a little bit of bleeding. But given the amount of color in here and the fact that after soap, that's it. This isn't bad. Um, this isn't bad at all. I expect that the water will be clear after just a couple of rinses. Um, and so, yeah, I'm, I'm so pumped. I'm so excited. I feel like a rock star. <laughs> Which, I mean, I guess I'm not very good. I, I never say like, ooh, I feel fierce. But these colors feel fierce. <laughs> Take a closer look. I don't think I can capture the neon of that red well on camera, but we have disorganized, but we have a fierce and clumsy, and we're gonna take a closer look. Here we have fierce, and the zip ties were near the red, so when I rolled things up, I think the red was near the bottom. So when some of this black dye, which there's some gray areas, but a lot of places it does feel very black, but some of that pigment then kind of squished and spread and leaked a little bit. You can see that a little bit on all the skeins. So at least there's some consistency, but you can also see with my hand painting, this black sections here feel a little shorter than some of the others, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> but I do feel the fierceness here in this colorway. And honestly, I love it. Now, in contrast with the color blocking of fierce, we have clumsy, which is a hodgepodge of the three colors. I really leaned into the messy drips and attempting to make whoops style pours intentionally. <laughs> but really it gave us a more random element and so I thought that this was just a fun way to compare the two sources of inspiration. Now Clumsy has a little bit more variation from skein to skein. They all have an element of some kind of more concentrated black spot but it isn't consistent at all. And honestly what is clumsiness if there's a lack of reproducibility. I mean, granted, with hand-dyed yarn, often two skeins even dyed at the same time in the same way, as we should have differences. But I think this really highlights that. And I love that my clumsy yarn has a uh, clumsy uh, reproducibility. I'm trying to go there, but yeah. I think that it works and it's fun and I really like it. There's one last thing I'd like to do before I sign off. And that is to bring out my red light and look at our fluorescent red glow. Oh my goodness. There, I feel like you can really, really see just the red in their glow and even pastel over there. It's looking wonderful. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I had so much fun putting together fierce and clumsy as applied to yarn into one video. And I hope that you had as much fun watching it as I did filming it. Please subscribe, turn on notifications, and do all the youtube -y things. This is the biggest way you can help support the content here on the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. And if you want other ways to support the channel, go and check out the Chemnitz Patreon. There are a lot of really fun perks, such as early access to this Dye Pop PS series, and patrons vote in monthly polls that shape the direction of the following month's video. And so it's a lot of fun to see what you pick because a lot of times what the patrons pick isn't necessarily what I would pick. And I think it makes me a better artist for all of that. There are other fun perks depending on the level like monthly Etsy coupons and behind the scenes sneak peeks. Uh, you can learn more at patreon.com slash chemnitz. Thank you so much for watching.